Why? Hello and welcome everybody. So uh, I just wanted to go ahead and give you guys an update video to the Forbidden Right Totem character that I'm playing right now. Sorry, it's been a little bit. I haven't been having that much fun with the league since all the changes. It's been a little bit difficult for me to adapt, but I'm maybe back um, having a bit more fun. So before I get started, I do want to let you guys know that I'm actually not using Forbidden Right anymore, but the passive tree is literally exactly the same. Um, the only thing different from what I have done is I have dropped Reign of Splinters and I am using Dark Pact instead of Forbidden Right. Every other thing on my character is the exact same. The jewels are the exact same. The, uh, you know, I'm running a Sleepless Sentries with Ancestral Reach mainly because uh, I would like to get a um, Ancestral Preservation, but that's like a 7x jewel, so just Sleepless Sentries for now. And then a Preservation with Echo. I'm using two rare jewels with Life Mana All Res just to help me res cap. Um, I have the same exact Militant Faith for Inner Conviction. Uh, I am using a Unnatural Instinct here, which is like a 4x jewel you do not need by any means. Uh, this is pretty much just for quality of life. In fact, I'll literally unspec this just to show you guys. Um, and then I'm using a Clear Mind until I get my Watcher's Eye. So at the moment, we are running 58% Mom. With the Watcher's Eye, will be 68% Mom. To explain the Watcher's Eye for you guys, uh, let's see if it's here or is it... Here. here we go. So uh, it's basically, if you look, up to 10% of damage taken from mana before life, and then Void Battery is one power charge, other Void Battery is another power charge, and then Anointing right over here will be another power charge, which will put us at 11 power charges without any corruptions. Um, so that's awesome. And then switching the Void Batteries from Apeps will be super good because we get a bunch more mana, which will put us to like probably 7,000 MP. Uh, and then that'll just be really nice. So at the moment, this character is over 11k effective life with Arcane Cloak. No problem at all. All right, let's go ahead and get started. The last thing I would state, the only other thing you need is an Astral Projector. At the moment, this ring is like 35 chaos. Uh, it doesn't really cost anything, and it pretty much enables you to get going with Dark Pact. Uh, the last, last, I promise, last one is you don't want to use any projectile supports for Dark Pact because it's an area skill. So I'm opting out for a clear speed variant. So I'm using Spell Totem, Dark Pact, Awakened Ink AoE, Multi Totem, Control Destruction. I'm gonna go ahead and jump right on into um, a Ramparts. I think it's a tier 11 map that we rolled. Is it tier 11? Actually, I don't even remember. It's a 78, I don't remember. Okay, so we got, uh, let's take a look here. Impale, but runic monsters, extra currency, rarity by monsters, log book on runic mobs. Um, these are both, should be pretty no problem. Let's go for some runic. Okay, good enough. So the main reason I decided to drop Forbidden Right and not necessarily full on drop it, but the main reason why I wanted to try something else, like Dark Pack, is the clear on Forbidden Right felt really bad for me. And no matter how I scaled it, uh, whether I, I uh, increased my cast speed by up to 200% because I was playing with my support, um, or if I scaled my prod speed by using faster prod and using Awakened Ink AoE, the clear just felt really, really bad. Um, and it was a problem because when I eventually want to zoom, I basically end up getting myself killed because I place a totem down and I have to wait for the projectile to land. Whereas Dark Pack does not have that projectile, it's just straight up, you know, boom, explode in your face, which is really, really nice. Also, uh, we are ready to run Righteous Fire with this build. So, of course, you know, it wouldn't be one of my builds if we didn't plug in Righteous Fire. So, that's a very big damage multiplier. Remember, we are running on just a five link right now uh, with two Pepe Rage. So Pepe Rage is a current 2C unique. Um, the reason why we're running them is the nice cast speed boost, along with the flat added chaos is just really good. And mainly because I have absolutely no desire to try to craft uh, or purchase a rare wand when I can just wait until void batteries. I do believe Forbidden Right has much higher single target damage potential scaling compared to Dark Pact. The main reason is because they scale off the exact same mechanics, but 
um, Forbidden Right has the extra ability to scale projectiles, so you can use things like Dying Sun, Rain of Splinters, etc. Even plus one proj enchant, I believe. Where's the boss? Oh, I didn't see him. So, one of the nice things about this, you can do this with the, the other totem as well, with Forbidden Right. Since we're playing a mana stacker, don't forget that you can use Sigil of Power and then preemptively place your totems to fill the Sigil, uh, because when the Sigil is filled, you will gain uh, you will gain a lot of added lightning, along with your Arcane Cloak for added lightning, and the lightning damage you gain is actually enough to shock even high-end bosses. Um, I've been shocking like even up to tier 14, tier 15 bosses. It's not much. It's usually between like 5 to 9%. But that's still a damage multiplier. And this is pre-void battery. Um, pre-void battery, pre-six link. And my six link is my strongest link. Because it's going to be power charge on crit. Which with 11 power charges is 44% more damage. And we could drop Awakened in KOE for Conk Effect when we're doing like instance fights like Awakener and other things. So that's pretty nice. Uh, I'm really excited for the potential scaling of this character. Um, can show you the tree, it looks exactly the same. Our ascendancy is exactly the same. Um, this is where my unnatural instinct goes, which gives us, on top of what you just saw, 9% cast speed, a little bit of life. 24% mana, mana region, AoE. Skill effect duration, ironically, is pretty interesting because when we use infusion, it actually gives us an extra two seconds on the infusion, which puts us to a 13 second infusion, which is awesome, especially for bossing. It's like 13 seconds, like that's really easy to keep up. And then I think when I quality my increased duration, it'll go up to like 14, maybe 15 seconds. Uh, again, we want to switch the anoint here from ironwood up to the uh, power charge over here. Uh, I just want to look at possible corruptions first on my Ireland decks before I do that. Uh, another thing I want to do is I'm debating on respecking one, two, three for one, two, three, because then I could get a better militant faith with like totem damage and chaos damage. Uh, and then the devotion scaling would be good. And then I can grab this entire mana cluster here. The only reason I'm not doing that is because, sadly, with my current gear, I need I need decks, or else I cannot use my Cloak of Defiance. Um, so what I want to do is drop one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna start dropping life nodes only because when I when I'm eventually like 71% mind over matter, there's literally no need for me to have 3,000 health. Like I will just like unless I have like I don't know twelve thousand mana or eleven thousand mana, I just don't really feel like I need that much life. Of course, I'm still gonna look for life, but then again, now that I think about it, I think the only life node I can literally respec is this one because I don't have any life node spec. Like th these are not even life nodes. These right here are literally just the uh, mana nodes because of healthy mind. These are double mana nodes. So all I have is life here, life here. So that's good, actually. That's good. So when I respect this part, I can drop this baby five node, right? And then I can drop this baby five node here. So we'll get two life nodes back. And those life nodes will most likely go into filling the uh, forethought wheel for more mana. Remember that more mana is more effective life um, because of mind over matter conversion. It also gives us a little bit of increased damage from divine guidance. It increases the amount of uh, bubble from our arcane cloak which gives us more lightning damage, which allows us to shock more frequently if we don't hit the threshold. Um, and then on top of that, it gives us more life recovery. And by dropping our life pool, we actually help our mana pool because we run agnostic. So it, it all kind of like goes together all at once, right? Kind of weird. Anyway, the character's scaling really nicely. Oh, also I get to pick up these three here. This is going to be 88% increase damage with 11 power charges. It's gonna be spicy, man. I'm very excited. Yeah, so that's pretty much the direction of the character. I don't have an enchant yet for my boots, 
Uh, I do want to get a recovery belt so I can have at least mana recovery. A mana life recovery would be awesome, but just the mana recovery belt would be nice. Uh, I don't need that strength roll, so it could literally just get replaced with a recovery roll there. Um, not really sure what else to do. I would like to get a fat dex roll on one of my rings or a T1 mana regen roll or T2 because it'll just help with gearing. Um, eventually, we'll get a better helmet once we're able to craft one. Uh, eventually, I'll go for unnerved gloves because unnerved gloves are just another damage multiplier. And then at some point, I may consider trying to get taunt for the totems. Um, and when I do that, I will also probably try to get a triple cluster jewel. I don't know what my last one would be, but I have the option of getting a triple because we branch into mediums. Uh, at the moment, it's just Unholy Grace and Dark Ideation. Anyway, that should pretty much be it for you guys. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. If you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. I hope you guys have been enjoying the highlights by Scapegoat, and I will catch you guys all later. Take care. Have a wonderful time. See you guys all tomorrow.